For an upcoming project, I need a way to put M8 bolts into the wall of this piece of tubing. And I need to put a row all the way down the length. Now, this is very thin wall tubing, so just drilling and tapping through this would not be good enough. So I need a way to make thicker threads in this wall. There are ways to do this. For example, flow drilling or riv nuts. But those are very expensive and require specialty tools that are out of reach of most of us hobbyists. So I need a way to weld on standard inexpensive nuts from from the hardware store onto the inside of this tube, but I need to be able to do it way out in the middle where I have to do it blind. So let me show you how I came up with a way to do that. I'm going to show you the technique on this short piece just so that you can actually see what's going on, and then toward the end of the video, I'll do it out in the middle of a long piece just to prove that it can be done. Once you've decided where you want the bolt to be, you need to drill a hole just barely big enough to fit the bolt. Don't oversize this. You don't wanna have a lot of clearance around the bolt. You want it to just barely fit. Bolts are typically a little bit undersized. This M8 bolt is actually about 7.8. So I'm using a 5 16th drill because that's the smallest drill bit I have that will still fit this. Before drilling this hole, I'm gonna mark the positions for two more smaller holes that will be on each side of that. The distance that the smaller holes need to be from the bigger hole is one half of the nuts flat width plus 2.5 millimeters or one tenth of an inch. In this case, this is a 13 millimeter hex. So half of that is 6.5 millimeters plus 2.5 is gonna be nine millimeters. Since these are very cheap calipers, I'm gonna use them as scribers. I've got it set to nine millimeters. Put one jaw in my center punch hole and scribe a line with the other. Don't do this with your good calipers. Don't let my use of calipers here fool you. These outer two don't need to be super precise. So this center hole is the one that needs to just barely fit the bolt. So you'll need to adjust the size of that for whatever size bolt you're using. And then these outer two holes are drilled approximately five millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch, regardless what size bolt you're using. We've just raised a bunch of burrs on the inside of the tube. So when I put the nut in there, it's not gonna want to sit flat. This is fairly easy to deal with when it's near the end of the tube because one of these types of deburring tools works quite well to deburr the inside of material. But as you can probably imagine, this would be a lot harder to deal with if I couldn't see the inside. But I'll show you later one way to deal with that. Now we need to put the nut inside and secure it with a bolt. If we were doing this on the middle of a long tube, I can't reach in and put the nut like that. So we're going to have to make a tool. I'm using the table saw for this because it's a tool that I have and am comfortable with. But I'm sure there are other ways to make this little wrench. So this slot is just wide enough to hold the nut and keep it from turning, and the clearance below it allows the bolt to pass through. And I'm just using the end of the bolt to push off the opposite wall of the tube. Using a longer bolt or maybe even threaded rod for this could be helpful because you could more easily check that it's square. So you can just see the corner of the nut inside the hole. So what we're gonna do is take our wire welder and aim it through the hole and pile weld on top of that nut. You don't want the wire to touch the side of the hole because if you do that, you're just gonna weld in this hole and not really weld the nut in place. So you wanna aim through the hole, weld on the nut, and then as you build up the pile on the nut, slowly back up and fill in this hole with weld. I'm doing this on a short piece so that you can see the inside. Here's how that will look from the inside. We'll be welding on top of the nut, starting back here, and then sort of working our way back until we finally fill in the hole, and then we're done. It is important to weld this with the tube vertical so that gravity will pull the weld down into the nut. So that was showing the inside perspective, but now let's see how it looks from the outside, which is what you'll actually be seeing. And here's how those finished welds look from the inside. Now I want to move on to talking about some different options, alternatives, and caveats. Since I mentioned it earlier, let's talk about what you can do about those burrs on the inside. The first thing I would recommend doing is remove as much as you can. So I'm just doing this blind. I'm not looking at the inside right now, so I don't know if I'm actually doing any good. So yeah, now looking inside, I can see I definitely didn't get it all, but now we'll put the nut in there and now I'm gonna take a bolt and washer and put that in from the outside. 
And now I'm literally just gonna tighten this bolt down and just crush all of those burrs flat. And I can see that I broke my tool, oops. And then take it back out. And now I'll put that back in with my long bolt. Looking into there, it looks pretty good. And if I hold it up to the light, there's almost no light gap behind the nut. So it's pretty tight against the wall. So this doesn't remove the burrs, it just smashes them flat. And I personally think that's good enough. You may have also noticed that this one I put straight across from a second nut that I already had in there. And to do that, I just put a bolt in that hole so that I can push against that bolt. And of course, the reason why we're using a bolt to push off the opposite wall rather than just tightening it down here is that we can't have the bolt head here on this surface because I need to have as much access beside the bolt as I can for welding. Also, it's very easy for it to end up on an angle like this. And that's why I mentioned earlier that it might be good to start with a longer piece of threaded rod or something so that you can more easily bring that back to straight and also just more easily put a square on it to check that it is straight. The other thing that helps a little bit is to grind a point onto it, like I have here, because then when it hits the other wall, it doesn't have as much of a tendency to walk sideways. Another option, which is slightly more involved, but if you're doing a lot of these, it might be worth it. Make a little thing like this so that you can actually just pull it from the top and still have plenty of room to get in there with your welder. If you happen to have a lathe, you can turn a shoulder onto the nut, like I'm doing here, and that way the threads will extend all the way to the outside face of the wall. So you might wonder what the advantage of this is. Well, I'm actually gonna be using it on my upcoming project because in one part of it, I'm gonna be passing a pipe through the inside. So this gives me 1 16th inch of extra clearance inside without losing me any thread engagement. As promised, doing it to a long piece now. It was actually pretty easy to remove the burr from the inside, just looking in from the end of the tube. Surprisingly easy to see what I'm doing in there. I made a new tool, this time from steel, since my wood one broke. My project has holes across from each other, so I can actually look in there and check my work. As you can see, I have a bunch more of these to do, so I've got my work cut out. Thanks for watching.